Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing something a little different and moving away from pistols and moving into long rifles. You already know what you're looking at by this picture here, if you can read upside down, and by the title of the video, I'm sure. But we'll get straight into this. This is the packaging that you get when you receive one of these. As you can see, reading upside down, this is a PTR-91FR. You get a standard pack package like this. Uh, you get your books, everything else included. Please forgive me, this is awkward. Had to change my setup a little bit for this. As you can see, you got your nice stuffing. You get your lock over here. You get your PTR owner's manual. But, I know you didn't come here to look at a case. You came here to look at a gun. So, we'll be right back and we'll switch this out for a rifle that I think you might like. And just like that, presto changeo, we have the actual rifle, the PTR-91. workspace to work with here so bear with me I am working on that on the outside this is an all steel construction based off the G3 roller lock design so I'm sure everybody knows that the nice thing I like about PTR is it comes welded with the scope rail on top the Picatinny that way there's a lot less you have to worry about and that's like a 30 to $100 claw clamp you no longer have to buy because it's right on there this thing, right out of the box, is zeroed in perfectly. At 100 yards, you bullseye a target, not a problem. If I can do it, I'm pretty sure anyone else can do it. Uh, as you see, I got a third party sling for it. Just a cheapo sling, cheapo bipod, which works out pretty good. But you'll notice you get your safety right here as you grip, down for fire. Up for safe, it is still very tight. You do have the paddle mag release to drop it. These are 20 round mags, you can get them directly from PTR. They're about seven or eight dollars. You get them from them used, or I'm sorry, brand new. This one's a little dirty because I haven't cleaned the mag. But you can also get these in surplus condition for four to five bucks a piece. There are no mags that are that cheap. I think I've seen them even down to three dollars a piece. This is an extremely heavy gun. I'll post some of these stats for it up so you can see them on the screen. You do have a rail on the bottom here. You have all your M-lock attachments. This is a metal handguard directly from PTR. Let me flip it up so you can see. It is PTR branded. Let me flip it around so you don't have to crane your head too much. There you go, PTR Industries, Anor, South Carolina. This is in 308 or 762 NATO. This is definitely not for <laughs> someone that is not used to lifting a heavy rifle. I'll tell you that much right now. It does have a few spots to where you can remove the it's all designed so you don't really need much in the way of tools but if you're wanting to charge it it is a little different than most firearms where you actually charge it 
up front, you pull it back, you pull it up, you can lock it up right up here for the bolt. And then you give it the infamous HK slap. Some people like that, some people don't like it. I like it, it's fun, and it's, it's not going to hurt the firearm. You'll be perfectly fine with that. You do have that paddle mag release down here I was talking about. You also have... I need to actually flip this over so you can see it right. You do have a button release here on the side. If you intend to use it that way. I just use the mag release. I'm used to AKs, so why not just do it this way? Put it back over here. Alright, now let's get into some of the details. Alright, so let's first off take a look at the sights. You do have the drum sight, like most AK HKs have. You have the wide setting, which you see here. Setting number one. These are quite tight. As you can see, I'm having trouble moving it. There's two, three. Whew, that sucker is on there. Use my good hand. And four. As you can see, four being the biggest, going all the way down to two for much more increased sights. They're screwed right in on the top. You have your windage elevation and such on it. That's your windage sight right there. You do have a ride a covered front side post. Keeps it so that way it doesn't snap off, so that's always nice. And there is that Picatinny rail that is included welded on, which is nice. There's your serial number. I absolutely love this firearm. I've been wanting one for years. I've had this for about a year. And I'm finally just doing a video on it. I love PTR. They make great products. And let me quit shaking this camera around because I'm sure you're getting seasick. Now on to a couple more details. And now we're going to show you the breakdown of the rifle. It's really not too hard. The parts are tight. That's the only part that you really have difficulty with. But it all starts on the back of the rifle. You have these two pins right here. You see them on the other side. You're going to want to pop these two pins out. I've done that a few times. Normally you cannot do that by your finger. You do need a little assistance. But you're going to take those two pins out right here. And we're right here. Both pins are out. And the nice thing about PTR, they give you a spot on these HK butt stocks. I should say HK came up with the idea originally. So you don't lose them. Because I know I'm horrible about losing little pieces like that. Once that's done, you're just going to wiggle this guy off of here. Off it comes. And there you have your guide rod recoil spring built right into the butt plate and the butt stock. This is easier without the sling. I probably should have taken that off ahead of time, but I'm lazy and forethought's not my best suit. Once that's been removed, you're then going to pull this down. As you can see, it just pulls down and falls right out. No problem. Now let me get some pieces out of the way and I will show you the bolt assembly. Okay, we now have the pistol grip, buttstock removed. Let's get that bolt out of there. Easiest way to do it, just grab the charging handle, pull it up. Now, stick your hand back here, pull that charging handle back. Out comes the bolt. Easy peasy. And there you have your bolt. As you can see, I do need to clean it. It is quite dirty from the last time I shot it. I will oil this back up before I put it back together. So in other words, I probably will not complete this video with a completed rifle because I want to oil it. 
And I'm sure you all do not want to see that on camera because that's boring. There's a look down there. I need to clean the inside of that too. Alright, and I don't feel like taking this off. You can remove this. It's not too hard. Uh, but once you remove it, you have to toggle this little piece. And I find you have to do it with a screwdriver or something because it's hard to get that back on there. So I just leave it on. There's no real reason to remove it. You can see the rollers right there. Once you're done with that, the front of the firearm, there's nothing left in it. Nothing falls out. You just have your empty tube. But that's all you have to do to take it back, take it apart, and disassemble. It's really quite easy. I like how nice it's all put together. Now we'll be right back with a little bit more info. Okay, so I decided to stop being lazy and I actually cleaned my rifle. And we'll show you how to put it back together. As you can see, so much cleaner. Little dog here, but... Alright, first step. You are going to insert this back here. As you can see, it fits right in. Push that down in there. You can see it goes all the way in. And the front charging handle pushed forward when you put that in. Next step, you're going to take the pistol grip. You're going to hook it around there and push it up there. All right, last step to this to reassembling. For one thing, make sure you don't tangle your sling, like I am currently doing. You're going to push that in. Give it a good smack so it's all the way on there. Take out your pins that are in your butt stock here. Why don't you take those out. You're just going to push them right back in there. Make sure it's in all the way too. Second pin. In. Push them down. Nice and seated. Now you can charge the rifle. Make sure everything works appropriately. No problems. And that's how you put it back together. So as you know, these were based off the G3 pattern rifles that the Germans made. Uh, those were originally, if I remember correctly, based off of the old Setme Spanish rifles, where they had the design from. They do use a roller, roller lock delay blowback system. Which, it actually makes the recoil on these a lot more manageable compared to most other 308s. That and the thing weighs a ton. That probably helps with the recoil as well. I have been able to stand this thing up and mag dump it while standing, firing from the shoulder. And I handle it just fine. Just lean forward a little and you're good to go. Uh, it is a little bit heavy, especially up front here. So, you know, make sure you do your curls if you're going to be shooting this. But it's easy to shoot from prone. It's easy to shoot from the table. I do like shooting it from the table. It's easy to shoot standing. It just is a little heavy, so you have to take that into account. Uh, you do get... The magazines are 20 rounds. You can get these in the old Setme or G3. I suggest the G3 over the Setmes, though, for these. They're nicer quality. And uh, even though you can get the surplus ones for like 3 4 or $5, I'd go with the PTR mags. They're higher quality, they're brand new, they work great. Um, they just, all in all, work so much better. And the magazines are very light, they're made out of aluminum. You get the steel ones, they're heavy, you add more weight to it, it still works the same, they're cheap. Even if you break one, just buy another one, doesn't matter. Even a sling for this is only like 3 or $4. But all in all, pretty affordable rifle. Um, I did get this from Atlantic Firearms. Had it ordered in, shipped to my FFL dealer, picked it up. 
I think within a week and a half. So not bad at all considering we're down here by Tampa. Uh, Spring Hill to be exact. But yeah, um, works great. I highly suggest it. If you're thinking about pulling the trigger on one of these and buying one, you've got a big thumbs up from me. I have never had a problem with this rifle. Not once. It shoots great. Never had a failure to feed. Never had any issues, really. I think the only issue I ever had one time was one of the cheap old surplus magazines I had the spring gave out and just dropped all the bullets into the bottom of the magazine. I thought it was a rifle at first, so I pulled the magazine out and they all just fell out of it. So I threw that mag away and, well, now we have the newer ones, which I highly suggest. But uh, we did take it out to the range. Um, I'll follow up in a second with some range footage. Instead of doing the picture-in-picture picture this time, I think I'm going to do some full screen, kind of show how it looks, how it works. Um, just for a little bit different options. We'll see if you guys like it or not. If you prefer my picture-in-picture, picture, let me know. If you prefer this way, where it's more full screen, you can see the rifle a little better. Um, let me know. We'll try that out, too. But we'll go ahead and cut to some range footage now. And last but not least, if you have not had a chance to join the Gun Owners of America or to donate to them, go ahead and jump on in. They will fight for your Second Amendment rights like no other company out there. Give them a shot, give them a look, help out. We need to protect these rights. It's our 2A rights that allow us to have things like this because these aren't just for sporting purposes. These aren't just for hunting or uh, shooting paper or steel. It's out there for other reasons, too. There's a main reason why it was set up that that is the Second Amendment. Not the 15th, not the 20th. It is literally the second after the freedom of speech and the First Amendment. So, take that into account when you're thinking about it. Alright? But, with that tidbit of info, because, you know, I'm such a knowledgeable person, if you can't hear the sarcasm in that, I'll just say it out loud. <laughs> I'm not that smart. I try. But uh, I hope everyone out there enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think, if you like this new format. And uh, if there's... Yeah, there's nothing else. I think I've got everything. But yeah, we will talk to you again next time. I hope you have a great morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. And uh, we'll talk to you again next time. Bye.